Well, not too far from home and guess what should happen? Little Ruby blew up. This is the first time that this car has ever left me stranded. Uh, she runs fine. <laughs> it's nothing to do with running. All the wheels are rolling, the brakes are working just fine. You say, well, what the hell's the problem? She even gets into gear just fine. Well, as I was pulling out into traffic, um, there was suddenly a loud bang like it popped out of gear, but when I went to check the gear shifter, it was in gear. So I think something either let go in the transmission, or maybe if I'm really lucky, one of the CV joints just came unbolted and spun around. I tried to look underneath it here, and when I leave it running, uh, to see if I see a CV cup or if I see one of the axles spinning, and nothing like that at all. So I don't know what the hell's wrong here, but we got Wild Bill on the way here, gonna give me a little bit of rescue and see if we can get me home. <laughs> but anyway, when we get home, I guess I gotta tear Ruby apart and find out just exactly what the hell's wrong in here. Anyway, as always, you guys, like, like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to plug the thing button. Get updates every time I upload a video. Check out DougShit.net for all my social media links. You can find my other YouTube channels there, too. Thanks for watching. We'll be back <laughs> with an update as soon as we get Wild Bill over here. Here comes the rescue! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh! I don't believe it, the duck man is actually stranded! Can you believe this? Oh man! Well, guess what? She runs fine, she rolls fine, even brakes are working fine, goes through the gears just fine, Clutch is working fine. Yes. No power to the wheels. <laughs> you know, maybe that's it. If that's what it is, I'm lucky. Uh, I'm hoping maybe the CV joint just popped out because I was notorious for the bolts backing out on those. Right. But when I looked underneath the car, I don't see them turning when it's in gear. All right, one more video update. We were brainstorming here thinking about what could happen as far as the hubs being chewed out. Now, they are CV Performance disc hubs, but when I looked under the car when I had it running, when it was sitting in gear and not going anywhere, I stuck my head under the back and I did not see the axles turning. So the problem is either in the transmission or it's at the CV joints that are close to the transmission. Those are the things that I could not get my eyes on from where this, this is at without actually getting it up on a jack. Ah, the wind noise is probably going to make a whole lot of racket to you guys. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I'm broke down. Gotta do what we gotta do. I don't even have my regular camcorder. <laughs> anyway, Bill's gonna help me here to, to uh, get towed home, and uh, well, we'll see what happens when I start tearing this thing apart. All right, here's Ruby. We got a rope tied around the bumper, which is a damn no-no, going around that bracket over there. But Bill's gonna be real gentle. If it is an axle, it's off. We don't want to go too fast anyway. There it is. And around the tow hitch, up to Rusty. I'm wearing my pants, so we're gonna be good. That's it. The only reason why I have those is because the people say, nice van, I got Yeah, I got them on the internet. Yeah, you should, you should start calling those buses instead of vans. <laughs> All right, well, we made it home. There we are. Still got the rope attached. Bill helped to pull me up the steep driveway because we got a pretty good incline over here and uh, we have this one part of the driveway where they put in a new one when they added all the new sidewalks. And this is where the incline changes and it just happens to be at the spot that's not as steep. And usually I can push a car myself from there. If it's below this line though, forget it. <laughs> just too steep, way too steep. But from up here, it's usually not too big a problem. Of course, I got some help from Bill, but we're gonna just pop off the e-brake, leave the strap on it, and just make sure that we can get the thing up to where it needs to go without having to do anything too crazy over here. But I trust that we can. I don't think it's gonna be too big of an issue. And then later, we gotta start taking Ruby apart and figure out exactly what the hell's in there. But I got projects stacking up. We got that over there. It still needs all its wiring. Got Eleanor in the garage. And we got bees, Carmen Gia in the back. And also I have a whole bunch of go-kart stuff that you guys know about also, so <laughs> the last thing I needed was something else to fix, and well, that's just what we're gonna have to do. And that means, Bill, I'm not gonna make it to the car show tomorrow. Well, there'll be others. Uh, at least I don't think so, anyway. Yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens. Maybe it's as easy as just tightening up the CV joint bolts and then everything's fine. That would be awesome. That would be great. I'm hoping that's the case, but I'm doubting it also. <laughs> so, power shift. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm power shifting. That's what I do. Doing bagels and yeah, bagels. Doing bagels. 
Doing bagels and eating muffins. That's it. Cutting muffins, rather. Yeah. Cutting muffins and doing bagels. <laughs> All right, well, let's see if we can get this thing moved up here. All right, now we got to get them out of here. Do you guys look, and it looks like it's a whole lot more room than there actually is. But I think you'll be okay. We're going to spot them here. Fold your mirror in. <laughs> Let's come straight back. Straight back, you're good. Yeah, this actually, that worked out just fine. Yeah, you're all good. That actually was pretty easy. Yeah, I just that little couple of Yeah, it's mirror would have caught the power meter. Are you good right here or do you want to help me push it? If you can help me push it, that'd be yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And there's the block of wood that was holding Ruby. There's Wild Bill, being wild as usual. It's gone! <laughs> and we managed to get Ruby pushed back to where she belongs. Got a little work to do on this sucker. That we'll figure it out in time. It is high on the priority list, as I've always said. This is always what comes first whenever something breaks, so Ruby's gotta be taken care of. Well, thank you for being so damn loud while I'm trying to record a video. You jerk. Look at you. Get out of here, you. <laughs> That's it. So we're gonna wrap this video up. So as Biddy just said, go to duckshit.net and follow all my social media links that you find up there. And uh we'll do some more stuff on Ruby coming up soon. Would you get out of here? Why do you gotta make noise now? And here comes did Boomer it, too. Did it, did it. That's all folks. <laughs> go away! She's exceptionally loud right now. Well it. she's against the block wall, well, so yeah, it's If I had something to throw at her right now, I would. <laughs> your camera, throw your camera. That's it. <laughs> well, I decided to uh, give this one more look over before <laughs> before I decided to call it quits for the day. And um, well, let me show you what I found. All right, here's the left side inner CV joint, the one that attaches to the transmission. And if you're looking, you can see a lot of these bolts here are backed out, and that's the problem I've been having. I'm going to be putting Loctite on these next time because, look at that, it's free from the CV joint cup. So yeah, turns out I didn't blow my differential as I thought might have happened, which is a bummer because I started to look into limited slip differentials. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's going to be a much easier repair as long as none of those bolts are sheared off. If they are sheared off, well, then it's going to be a lot harder. I'm going to have to pull that cup out of there and uh, do a little drilling, tapping, easy out kind of stuff and uh, deal with the loose bolts, but um, deal with loosening up the bolts that are busted off, if they're busted off. Uh, otherwise, yeah, Loctite's going to be the answer. I think blue Loctite is probably all it's really going to need, but these damn things are always coming loose. And even if I look up here, here's your outer CV joint. Look at that. We got a loose bolt right here. The great thing about them is they don't usually go anywhere, they just hit the rubber and they don't disappear, so it doesn't appear that I'm missing any, and that's a good thing. But yeah, there's my problem. Easy fix. Pain in the ass, obnoxious, one of those things that shouldn't happen but does, and I've never had it happen on any car except for this one. But this is the only one that I've ever replaced all the bolts on, and that's uh, brand new, probably Chinese-made bolts for you. I bet they're just a little softer than the stuff that you get Volkswagen OEM. And that's the reason why we're having a problem today. Look at that. Alright, well... At least that's easy to fix. Anyway, we'll see if I find some time tonight, and maybe I'll make it to the car show tomorrow. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm under the car, and getting humped by a chicken. <laughs> Come here, Benny. Come on. First, I thought it was Boomer. Biddy attacking my feet is something altogether new. <laughs> Be good, Biddy. Dad loves you. Biddy dummy. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Okay, here we have some CV joints with, I believe, OEM bolts. So, fresh for the harvest. We're just gonna take these out of here. I might need two hands to do this. But as I was saying earlier, you gotta flex the boot just to get these things out. Here we go, there's one. I'm gonna need 24 of them. So anyway, I'm gonna use both hands for this and I get these things all taken apart here. Nice, this shouldn't even be out here. <laughs> I mean, technically, it is on the grill. It doesn't belong here with a bunch of greasy CV joints. <laughs> Should be a little over two dozen in there. Should be good enough to find ones that have good splines in the heads. And we'll get those suckers degreased, buffed up, and installed. Here we go, 24 of them, ready to go. <laughs> All right, I've got that left side axle out. CV joints appear to be in order. Uh, I hate taking these things apart because they're greasy, nasty, dirty. The hands are already a damn disaster. Looking at the bolts here, you notice three of them are normal length, but the threads on them are completely obliterated. These were loose, and I guess they got pounded inside the CV joint as the CV joint would bang around. Then the other three here are short, and that's because they're all busted off. So the portion that's missing from that bolt is probably still in the CV cup on the transmission. That's exactly what I didn't want to have happen. That means now I have to pull that cup off and uh, start running the easy out or some kind of a bolt remover to get those little bits out of there. Pain in the ass, but eh, that's just the way it's going to be. On the outside, the other end, however, there was five bolts that were semi-loose. They really weren't that tight at all, and one bolt was broken, which kind of surprised me that they could all be loose and just one of them be broken versus what happened over here. So anyway, any axle stub on the other end, I'm going to have to um, pull that out also, or maybe maybe I'll get lucky and just be able to <laughs> turn it, doubt it. And here you can see the little wear pattern here where it was rubbing on the inside of the uh, uh, frame head on the back there. Alright, well, clearly that side doesn't have the rubbing. This side does, so you can see the little bit of friction that it had when it came off, and I had to get towed home. Not a big deal, it's not gonna hurt anything. I might get a little bit of a, a rusty line in time, but uh, yeah, again, I'm not worried about it. But I hate working with these greasy, nasty things. Okay, CV joints are just such a sloppy mess. All right, you look in here on the CV flange. You can see on the top, there's a piece of bolt. On the bottom, there's a piece of bolt. And in that hole, there was also a piece of a bolt. But I managed to get that out by just putting my thumb on it and turning it. And that also includes the one that was over here on this end that was on the axle stub. So I got two out of four out relatively easily. Those look like when they broke off, there's a little burr sticking out of it and it's stuck into the threads. I suspect all the threads in here are probably going to be fine. I just have to get these uh, little pieces of bolt turning, whatever it takes to get them moving. And once they move, I think they'll come out. But uh, alright, it's going to be a fight. I'll probably be under here for about an hour or more. <laughs> One, two, three, four. There's all the little bolts that broke off. Every single one of them. Three of them came out relatively easily with my thumb. One of them took a little bit of work and then it started to move. The last one, however, did not want to come out at all and it put up quite a fight. And it's this one here. You can see it had a little tit sticking up on it. So what I did was I pushed the screwdriver into the tip, and the nice thing is it's sticking up on one side. So I just gently tapped it with a hammer and it turned. So then I went around and just got about a full turn on it. Once it was about a full turn, I could pinch it with my fingers and I could just work it out. And I thought I'd be under there for a couple hours and it turned out it really wasn't as bad as I thought. But here's the old bolts and here's the new bolts. And they are just significantly different in weight. I mean, yeah, okay, the head is a different size, and the stock bolt, uh, OEM bolt, rather, is a little bit longer than the other one, but the weight is just tremendously different. I don't know what these things are made from. I'm going to venture to say some kind of steel, but maybe they just put too much carbon in it. Maybe it's just a really shitty alloy. But this one is just incredibly heavy in comparison. I wish I had my scale working. I'd put them on a scale for you, but there's a uh, several gram disc difference. I mean, I can I can feel it. I can distinguish that. But we're going to reassemble this CV joint with these older OEM bolts. We're going to use these same washers. These things are fine. And we're going to get this thing reassembled. Once that's good and it's assembled here on the left side, I'm actually going to back the car out from where it's at. 
and it's right in there. And uh, it should be drivable at that point, but the right side needs to be addressed as well, but I can't get in there from where it's at. So we're gonna have to move the car to a different location. What I'll probably do, I'll just back it out over here somewhere at a diagonal. And there's B's engine with all the chrome that's gonna cause it to overheat. <laughs> Otherwise, we're making progress here. And like I said, this wasn't nearly as bad as I thought, so we're just gonna stay on it. Let's get something done today. All right, there it is. Assembled with the old OEM bolts, ready to go in. Um, I'm going to, yeah, they're all greasy already, look at that. I guess I have to clean off the tips of these bolts a little bit. I wanna put some Loctite on them. We are going to Loctite these, so I'm gonna push all these bolts through. I'm gonna wipe the grease off the end, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the Loctite on there. Um, if the Loctite is in direct contact with the bolt, I think it'll be all right. There you Okay, we've got our axle back on there. Everything looks ready to go. I'm gonna bolt the wheel back on, and uh, everything torqued down to about 35 foot-pounds. That might seem a little extreme, but um, some of the Porsche's uh, recommendations on those are a little bit higher. On a Beetle, typically it's 25 foot-pounds. On a bus, I believe it's 33, so yeah, I went a little bit higher than that. Uh, it's all the same bolts for anybody that's asking, and I got everything bolted down here, and I trust it just fine. Now, in hindsight, I was having trouble meeting 25 foot-pounds on the opposite side. I actually had to replace a couple of the bolts that I had installed that were replacement bolts to begin with because when I before I even hit 25 foot-pounds they just started to get looser so they were shitty mushy bolts just to begin with and well they were just crap so anyway <laughs> when we address that side we're going to be pulling that apart and I almost guarantee that the stock bolts that are in there uh, were probably the only reason why the right axle is still on tires starting to see some inner wear from all the camber that's on here not that it uh, is getting so much wear from the IRS. Back when I used to have the swing axle on here, it was a different story. <laughs> if you watching my channel, you know that about a year ago, I upgraded everything from uh, swing axle to IRS, welded in the pivot points, got everything changed out, and the thing just drives great. Right, here we go. Let's start putting these lug nuts on. <laughs> Hey, fucker. Minor abuse of a tool. <laughs> Why is it doing that? Right. Yes, I have two different lug sizes on here. You know, that's the reason why I'm having a problem. I realize that now I had the wrong size. Cool. That's more like it. Alright, now. Better. Alright. Put it down on the ground and I'll properly torque them. Up. Gotta get my jack stand out. <laughs> Much better. All right, we've got her backed up. Yes, it is driving again, but I don't trust the axle on this side now with them Chinese bolts. So I've already got the hubcap off, and off comes the wheel. Well, this side doesn't look nearly as bad. The axle is in place, the CV joints are not moving. I did notice it was about one loose bolt on this side. There it is right there. And I thought I had seen one. Now two loose bolts. There's one loose there too. 
Hopefully they're not busted off. I thought I had seen one that was completely missing altogether. Eh, maybe I was daydreaming. <laughs> Unless it was on the other end. Yeah, no. Eh, I guess I was daydreaming. Who knows? Yeah, it looks like they're all there. All right, well, we're gonna get in there with some sockets and extensions, and we're gonna start taking these bolts out and replacing them one by one. Somebody came over here to harass me. Hey, now you're gonna run away. Now I got the camera on you, huh? All right, bye. You suck. <laughs> well, the inside wasn't too bad at all. I just used an impact here, and uh, since they were all loose with a long extension, everything just came right out. I've got them all wound back in, and they're, uh, they're finger tight at this point. They're ready to be torqued down. We're gonna do the ones on the outside here and see if we get the same result. Of course, I won't need the extension for those, but uh, crossing my fingers, hoping everything's gonna be okay. So far, so good. Well, I gotta say, this side was a lot easier than the other side. Everything came out, there was no broken bolts. Everything torqued down properly, I didn't have any problems at all. Uh, I think the saving grace on this side was there actually was a few stock Volkswagen bolts that I put in here. Now in hindsight, the reason why I did that is because the Chinese ones were stripping out before I even hit the torque specification. So there was one up there and one on this side and I think that's what held the axle on, despite all of the other bolts, except for the Volkswagen OEM ones, were all loose. So anyway, yeah, total crap. Well, I guess we're ready to put it back together, throw the wheel back on here, and uh, Ruby's ready to drive again. I'm excited. While I'm under here, I also measured out my heater tube. Not that we're probably going to need it the rest of the season anymore, but the heater tubes on here just crumbled and fell apart, so I need to get a new one, and they're roughly seven and a quarter inches is the gap between the heater box and the body. So anything that would fit that gap is what I need, so I'm going to order up some parts for that, and I'll have it fixed, even though it really doesn't matter this season. <laughs> would have been nice, though. I did have a couple winter cruises. Anyway. All right. I can't believe I'm actually getting this done before it's getting dark. I'm gonna have to reverse these tires. I'll talk to Carlos because on the inside there's a wear pattern due to the camber of the rear. And that's from when I had the swing axle rear on here. So what you do since these tires are non-directional, you take them off the wheel, you turn them around and put them back on so it'll wear the other side. So I'll get X number of miles out of the tire all over again. Otherwise, they are about five, six years old, but there's no drywall cracking. Uh, there's no dry rot at all. These tires appear to still be in decent shape, and there's enough tread on them. It's not on the inside. Not completely bare, but it is getting a little smooth. All right, let's go ahead and bolt these wheels back on. them once we get it down on the ground but we are just about done All good. One hubby cap. Well, how about that? That was a Chinese socket. Look at how it cracked on me. This sucker actually lasted me 35, well, roughly 30 years. I think it was right around the early 90s I got this thing. So not quite 35 years, but 30 years. And uh, it was Chinese. And I've done a lot of lug nuts on it, tightened it to about 80 foot-pounds, and just finally it let go today. 
But why not? More Chinese metal, right guys? <laughs> All right, in summary, we had six broken off bolts. I lost two of them. Uh, three, of them three of them were on the inner flange, three of them were on the outer flange, all on the left-hand side. Uh, all the bolts on the left-hand side were loose. Most of them were coming out or out completely. Um, needless to say, the left side was pretty borked. The right side, on the other hand, all the bolts were loose. Not a single one was broken off. The only ones that were solid were the original Volkswagen ones that I had put in there. And that was back when I was trying to torque these things down. And some of these Chinese bolts, before I even hit 25 foot-pounds, were stripping. So I replaced a couple of them with Volkswagen parts back then, and I took them out and replaced them anyway. But they actually did hold themselves in there tight. I just didn't want to have to deal with the heads being a little beat up on them, but nonetheless, these weren't in the best shape. The ones that I put in there, I graded, and I picked out a good set. So I think everything should be good from here on out. No more of this Chinese crap ever, especially when it comes to China sockets that are breaking at the same time. So, you know, could I do any worse today with, you know, Chinese metallurgy? Yeah, nonetheless. Garbage, garbage, garbage. This is made in China too. I wonder how much longer that'll last. But it was free, I'm not complaining. So I'm gonna put all these here in a little cup and I'm gonna save some of them for a conversation piece because I've got lots to talk about with some people about CV joint bolts. Never, never again will I use replacement ones that come with a axle. It does make me, you know, what kind of, it does make me wonder what kind of condition the axles actually are. I think they're remanufactured German parts, but I don't know. Those are Chinese too, and they're made like these things are. Total garbage. Ugh. All right, well, link you like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget to pluck that dingle bell so you get updates every time I upload a video. Check out duckshit.net, so that way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. We'll have a little more on Bees Carmen Gear coming up soon. We've been pushing pretty hardcore on that thing to get it done, so we'll give you updates when we have them. You be good, Ruby. I replaced you with some good parts. <laughs> and you be good too, Boomer. Stay out of trouble. Hey, what are you doing? Turd burglar. <laughs>